This is your family's first and most important line of defense against Mother Nature. When she strikes, make sure you call the people that I trust, my family and friends at Exterior Home Solutions. He's Grant Ramey, I'm Rob Lewis, and this is gonna be your only Exterior Home Solutions fast break from Nashville this week, as Tennessee falls hard in the quarterfinals to Mississippi State today, 73-56. Grant, there's just nothing good to say about it. No, uh, disaster, worst case scenario. Um, what Tennessee fans fear in March comes to life when you get down 19 and you start five for whatever it was, I don't know, from the field. It was awful, shot 20% in the first half, shot eight for 33 from the three-point line for the game. Um, Dalton's missing shots, Sansi's missing shots, Sakai's missing shots until the second half. Uh, it's just kind of worst case scenario. And just and got beat up in the paint. And it wasn't the Tolu Smith show like it was in no, Starville. No. I mean, Smith was in foul trouble. He, he had seven points and five rebounds, but outscored 42 to 14 in the paint by Mississippi State. And that wasn't just all bigs. That was, they were driving to the basket. They were getting to the rim with, with the dribble in a way that you just don't really see teams yeah. do against Tennessee. That, that's the concern because this team is always going to try to out defend the other team and they're going to try to live on the defensive end. But it, what felt different this year is they should have more offense and they should be making those shots. Now they're letting it feel like missed shots affect the defense and there's not enough on the defensive end and the drive-bys and the stuff in the paint and turnovers. It felt like it, Rick said it snowballed, it snowballed fast it, and they got to find a way to fix it. it. I mean, they just didn't look like the, the top seeded team in this tournament. I mean, they no. looked that, I mean, Mississippi State came in with their backs to the wall on the bubble and, and they looked like the more confident, you know, team. I mean, which that really surprised me. I, mean, I thought Tennessee, they didn't have a. They ended up the turnover, turnover turnover numbers didn't look that bad, but man, they had some ugly ones in the first half that were just, you know, sloppy that, that were turned into layups. I think, I think they had a stretch where it was four straight turnovers. Two of them were Tobey Walker. No idea why he had the ball in his hands in that moment. Uh, there was a shot clock violation mixed in there too. That's when the wheels it felt like started to come off. And there was a 13-2 run I think from Mississippi State, and they kind of took over from there. Big picture wise, it's how quickly can you turn the page from this? How quickly or how do you stop this from letting doubt creep in that this is going to happen again next week? And then if it does, it's it. That's it. Yeah, and I'm not pushing the panic button because I, I mean, I still think Tennessee's a good basketball team. But to your point, three of the last four halves of basketball to close right. the regular season, right. they have not looked good at all. I mean, right. that, that first half against Kentucky, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to say that you know they, it was exactly the same as today. But I mean, there's, there's some chinks in the armor as we head into March. And you want, you know, every team is not as physical, as athletic as Mississippi State. But man, they might have given some teams a, a blueprint for how to take Dalton out. And, and it feels like with this team, it's going to be a mental warfare because they had to sit on that Kentucky loss for a week. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to sit on this loss for a week, uh, depending on where you go, who you play, all that stuff, if it's a Thursday or a Friday game. So you better be able to reset or humble yourself or be the underdog, like Jamal Meshack was talking about after the game figure out a way to get back to being a good basketball team or a better version uh, of what we've seen so Technical far. Technical difficulties. Yeah, it's all falling apart. But uh, yeah, and I was just surprised. I'm not surprised they lost because that could happen to March. I'm just surprised at how discombobulated. And uh, you know, you got you got two two got two starters. This is their fifth SEC tournament. The guys played in a million basketball games, and they just. I mean, that experience, that veteran leadership, that, that didn't show up today. That that was my biggest surprise. And, and you know, just not staying in front of in front of guards, but. I, did, I don't know, Grant. Well, you've been doing this a long time. I've been doing. And we, there's no rhyme or reason to what whether no. it's going to carry over to the next week or not. I mean, sometimes it, it, it does. Other times, you know, teams take it. It's a, it's a fresh slate and they take off. So I, I don't think you can extrapolate today's result and say, well, you know, forget about next week. It just doesn't work that way. Right. And I, I wasn't penciling in a Sweet 16 run when Zakai tore his ACL last yeah, year, same. and when Tennessee was they got to the quarterfinals here last year and lost to Missouri and then they end up in the Sweet 16. And they end up against the eight seed in Florida Atlantic or nine or whatever they were. So you never know what's going to happen, good or bad. You can be a really good basketball team that goes out in the first round. You can be a number one seed and lose to a 16. So who knows what happens, but they better find a way to respond, to answer the bell, because this is it. I think we can stop the, the one seed thought, though. It's today. over. Do you, think, do you think that's over? I think it's over. I mean, if you follow along what everybody's saying, who knows if anybody knows what they're talking about. But it felt like they had to win, at least get to Saturday, to stay in it with Carolina. But I think more than winning, they just had to avoid a loss like the one they just took. Right, and, right, exactly. And that's that just, to me, that, I, mean, I could be wrong. I don't, know, I don't understand all the computer models. That felt like they just, you know, shoved the one seed. They needed to have a pulse, and now they they didn't have a pulse. Yeah. And and what they've been projected, it feels like, is a two and 
uh, the South region with Houston, which would be Dallas in the second weekend. So maybe it benefits them down the road. Who knows? I think it, it, I think Tennessee made it easy for the selection committee. Yeah, right? for, sure, they, for they, sure. They took away any controversy. There's not a, not much debate. It feels like. Yeah, I don't think so. Don't think so at all. But you know, ugly day. We've got lots of coverage. If you, if you care to, if you care to check on and read it. But you know, Tennessee. Bottom line, Tennessee's going home a lot earlier than they thought they were. For sure. It's, it's March, baby. Enjoy it. It's Enjoy fun. it. He's Grant Ramey. I'm Rob Lewis. This has been the Exterior Home Solutions Fast Break on BallQuest.com.